Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. good. You're so fresh as a daisy on a Sunday oh, morning. thank you. <laughs> yeah, I got like um, 10 hours of sleep. That's good. That's like my minimum. That's, That's what I are need. You, are you like, do you sleep throughout? Or no, do you wake up? I wake up a couple times, but sleep pretty well. And our dogs bark a lot. They bark too much. Oh, but you have dogs, so. That is true. That yeah. is true. So it's not about me. It's about Hustlers. Such a great movie. Thank you. Like drama, emotional, funny, sexy. I keep saying this, and I'm just going to say it. I get Scorsese vibes. Like, wow. There's like a good feller's like. Yeah, that was definitely in Jennifer, Ramona mm -hmm. is the godfather. Yeah. Yeah, Laureen, when I first talked to her about the movie, she told me that that was, a, Goodfellas was a really big inspiration oh, really? for it. Yeah, and I was like, that makes sense. So did you know anything about this story at all before you were approached? I actually didn't. So when I read the article, I was, you know, it was I was reading it with fresh eyes. Um, and when I read the script, it was, you know, the first time hearing of this story. So I definitely hadn't known about it before, which made it all the more interesting. So how do you even start? prepping, you know, you're going from Riverdale to stripper. Yeah, I mean, there was overlap between Riverdale and, and Hustlers. In so terms I was, of the characters? No, in terms of <laughs> shooting. <laughs> I was still shooting Riverdale when I started Hustlers, so I had to fly back and forth from New York to Vancouver. Um, That's a mind. But not really, because they're so vastly different <laughs> right. that it didn't really feel like I... It was it's quite easy to transition between the two. Mm -hmm. I feel like if the characters were... Uh, more similar, it would be harder. That makes sense, yeah. um, but because they're so different and the environments are so different and the looks were so different, it was actually quite easy to, to differentiate between the two. So, do you meet with real strippers or do you just really study the story? Or do you sit down with the writer? I mean, I think Laureen was my biggest source of, of, of help. Mm -hmm. I talked to her um, quite a bit about, about the character and what she wanted. And I was kind of nervous at first because I hadn't done. Uh, a movie part for for a while so I, I after each day on set the first few days I was like is, was that okay was that what you wanted <laughs> like is that in the vein of what you're thinking for this girl and she was like yes absolutely just trust your instincts like you're doing exactly what I want you to do so she was very comforting and and I think um, prep wise I mean I don't really do too much mm -hmm. to prep I, things just mostly happen in the moment when I'm on set. So, I mean, I obviously think about the character and who I want her to be, right. and but I, you know, kind of go off what the director wants from me. And, and the thing is that I keep telling people, I'm like, it's not a stripper movie. Like, I think people are going to think that it's just, oh, there's the Riverdale star stripping and showing everything. There like she it, is. But it's not, it's, it's so much more than yeah, that. Yeah, it is. It's and really, what I say, it's a story of survival and chosen family. Yeah, and it's, it's sort of like, you know, you're going to judge a book by its cover and be like, okay, this movie's about strippers. And, uh, and even when I got the script sent to me and looked at the log line, I was like, oh, God, what is this? <laughs> Do I want to be involved in this? And then reading the script, it's so much more and it's such an actual story and i actually don't think that it's it's a, a movie about strippers about stripping it's a movie about women and what leads them to do what they do so you know it's not even about stripping as a as a performing art right. it's it's more so just about the women so and that's wonderful what do you think the movie says about survival i mean i think that Especially in Ramona and Destiny's case, you do what you need to do for your kids. And um, in Annabelle's case, I think she she got swept along into the scheme that mm -hmm. they're that they're in because she's quite young and, and naive, and I think easily persuaded because her her family kicked her out of her her house when they found out what she was doing. So I think she really relied on these older women to show her the ropes, and you know she was very easily kind of brought into mm -hmm. it. But I think. When it comes to survival, I think, I don't know, you have to do what you have to do, I guess. But I'm not justifying what they did in any sense at all. But I think, um, I think they were blinded by what they were doing because of their need to live and their mm -hmm. need to support themselves. So, do you like these women? I do, because you do root for them. Yeah. You really do. It's this weird thing, because you're rooting for them. There were parts where I was rooting for them, like yeah. when, when, when the guy jumped off the, 
the house. Sure. And, and I'm like, oh my God, I hope that works out for them. And I'm like, yeah. what am I talking about? Well, yeah, it's it's crazy because you they are doing these awful situations, but the way that the story is told, you do like you feel for them. So you don't really look at them as the bad guys, even though they are, you see them as women who are just trying to get by and doing what they they feel that they need to in order to like you said survive so yeah they are they are the bad guys but you're seeing them through the lens of reality and through women just trying to survive at that time and talk about the first time you met jennifer lopez i met her uh the first time i shot with her was the last scene in the movie where you see us all together in the jail cell <laughs> so uh so so i think that's jail, where i Jennifer met her i was in bad. jail with her and um and i'm like sitting in the corner and she's in the scene kind of uh there was a moment where she came and was like touching my hand she's like it's gonna be okay like she was very um she was very like into the scene before it even started, which which was really sweet. And um, she was just very warm and like a like a mama bear. That's what I call her. She's um, she really is like very. Um, uh, she just has a, a very caring personality, mm. and she's she's very sweet. And talk about the force of Jennifer Lopez. This is a woman who said, "No, no, you're not going to tell me what to do. I'm going to do the what I want." The force of Jennifer. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's she's been in the industry for such a long time, and she's such an such an icon. But I, I really, I really tr try not to look at her that way. I mean, she's just my she's my co-star, and she she knows what she's doing, and she's incredibly talented. And I really admired the way that she came to set so prepared and so on it, and she like really knew who her character was. Um, I mean, she's just a badass, and she she just she just gets it, and she she's just she's really wonderful to work with, and to watch her work is really. I mean, I felt honored to be to be there, <laughs> and I got to sit on her lap in a scene, so that's pretty great. So, do you like use that at restaurants? Like, I need a table. I sat on Jennifer. Oh, sure, I will use that next <laughs> yeah. time I I don't get in. Like, I don't know if you know who I am, but I sat on J Lo's <laughs> lap, so. Um, let's talk a little bit about Riverdale. Okay. How many seasons do you see it going? I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think, I don't know, maybe six or seven. I really, because the kids are graduating from, from high school and are right. season four, so I'm not sure. I think, you know, it's once they get out of high school, I don't know where. Do you go to Riverdale Community go. College? I hope not. <laughs> I really hope not. I hope there's better things for, for Betty coming up. What do you see for yourself in the future? For myself? Yeah. I I mean, I think I, w I was really lucky to do this film. Um, Sarah Schechter, who's one of the executive producers of Riverdale, is is really close friends with Laureen Scafari, our director. And so um, she was a huge uh, force in allowing me to do this movie and, and, you know, at the same time as Riverdale. And, and I think... Um, I was, I'm just so lucky that I was able to be a part of it. And I think future-wise, I'm trying to do as many films as I can on my hiatus from from Riverdale, like no sleep, <laughs> no rest for the wicked, but the, but that's how I want it to be. You know, yeah. I, I think film is really where my passion lies and and I love filmmakers and, and I think I just, I, I like what Jeff Bridges says where he it's like every role he takes is a 180 from the last role he played. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's a really good way to look at your career because you got to keep it interesting and play as many people as you can. So 